Hey guys, so I wanted to jump on tonight and talk a little bit about pregnancy and postpartum. I have mentioned a couple times um, within my stories and stuff, but I have recently done quite a bit of continuing education um, through the Institute of Clinical Excellence, which I highly recommend for physical therapists, um, about pregnancy and postpartum, specifically how that relates to being athletic and how that relates to just not, maybe not even being athletic and just dealing with incontinence and a lot of stuff along those lines. So today I wanted, and basically I wanted to be able to take all the knowledge that I've learned because I found it super, super helpful. And if I was pregnant, I would want to know that information. And I want to pass that along to you guys because I think you could really benefit from it. So tonight I'm talking about exercise during the pregnancy and postpartum period, how to do it safely. So First off, I wanted to just kind of talk about the fact that it is safe to do it. It's safe to exercise while you're pregnant, even if you've never exercised before, and even if you have some health complications like gestational diabetes or other stuff going on, as always, you want a doctor's clearance, um, your regular physician to exercise, but it is safe and it can actually reduce, um, potentially reduce the first and second stages of labor, as well as make you more likely to have a smaller baby, which I'm pretty sure every woman would want. Um, and it also reduces maternal weight gain, obviously, because you're exercising, but it can also reduce your risk of postpartum depression. And I know that's something that a lot of people can be concerned about too, because it's a very real and difficult thing to go through. Um, but if you do exercise during your pregnancy, um, research has shown that it does reduce your risk for that. So I wanna talk first about some red flags, so some absolute no's. So like if you're getting these symptoms, you should stop exercising, you should go to your doctor because it is serious. I think these are important, but this is kind of the more medical side of it. And then after that, I'm gonna talk about more of the athletic side. Like if you're doing stuff, how do you know when maybe you should scale back a little bit? So first, um, for red flags, so if you get any of these symptoms, you should definitely stop immediately. So persistent or excessive shortness of breath, severe chest pain, and I'm kind of looking off to the side because I did a little bit of notes. Um, regular and painful contractions, these could be serious or they could be Braxton Hicks contractions and not be necessarily a big deal, but if they're regular and painful, you should definitely stop. Um, also, if you have any bleeding or loss of fluid, as well as persistent dizziness or fainting, um, not to be crass, but I think if you're fainting, you're going to stop. Um, so, but to the more athletic side, now, how do you know when it's too much? Like, what, what will your body do? How do you know when you should scale back? So there's kind of three or four things that I think are really important to look for. And the first is doming or coning. So during pregnancy, your abdominal muscles kind of spread apart a little bit, and that's perfectly normal and it happens for everyone. However, sometimes people have difficulty getting these muscles to go back together after pregnancy. And if you put too much stress on your abdominal muscles before they're ready, you're gonna get a little kind of pooch. It's gonna be a vertical kind of pooch, straight up and down, and it's gonna bulge out. So if you're doing a plank and you look down and you see a very round um, kind of cylindrical thing kind of popping out towards the floor, that is what I'm talking about. And that is a sign that you're putting too much load on those muscles before they're ready for it. So very commonly you may see this in a snatch where you're really extended through your back and your stomach is being pushed forward. So if you're getting that doming or coning with that snatch, you should scale it back. Same thing with hanging on the rig. Um, as you go along in your pregnancy, everything gets looser, things move more, and sometimes when you're hanging, you can get that as well. And that's a sign that maybe you shouldn't be doing stuff on the rig currently, not that you can't do it ever again, and after you have your baby, you can definitely return to it. But for right now, for your best health and to set yourself up for the best pregnancy delivery and postpartum period possible, you probably should scale it back just for your own health and for your own sanity. Sometimes if you push yourself in the moment, it may feel really, really good, but ultimately you're going to want to be happy, healthy, and just feeling as well as you can throughout your entire pregnancy. And it can be hard to step back, especially if you have an athlete's brain and you really want to push yourself, but sometimes it's necessary to do that for the long haul. So the next symptom that if you get this, um, you should try to find a way to minimize or decrease the activity you're getting. Um, and it's any sort of incontinence with activity. Usually this is with like double unders, 
box jumps or like a heavy squat clean. Those are going to be the action activities that are going to bring it on most likely. And it is if you're early postpartum, it just means your body isn't ready for that amount of intra abdominal pressure yet. It's because when you get pregnant, everything gets stretches out. It's harder to control that. It's harder for those pelvic floor muscles to do their job. So when you're getting those symptoms, usually you can you can always scale back and it's figuring out how to scale back and what's the best way to scale back so you can still get the stimulus of the workout but doing it in a and feel like you're doing something but doing it in a way that isn't putting any extra pressure on your pelvic floor because if you do push that too aggressively early on you can end up with more issues down the road and that's something that most people do not want and then um, the last two things kind of, they go together a little bit, but it's a feeling of like a heaviness or a bulging or any like burning sensations in places they should not be. Um, that can be symptoms of things just, your pelvic floor just not ready to support everything and everything not really being there yet. And that just means that we can scale the exercise back a little bit. It does not mean you need to stop or take everything away. It just means maybe stepping back a little bit, waiting until your body is ready and then going forward. Being um, postpartum, it's because if you think about it, you just did nine months um, or you during the postpartum period, you had those nine months beforehand and it was a general, it was a gradual kind of process for your body. It's going to take at least the same amount of time to really get back to where you were before. It's not a quick process. It does take a while. Um, so yeah, so that's, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, I decided November is going to be kind of a theme around pregnancy and postpartum. And so once a week for the next four weeks, I'll hop on. Um, it'll usually be a Wednesday or Thursday and share a little bit about what I've learned. And hopefully you guys find it helpful as well. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them my way. I'd love to answer them for you. And have a great night.